Due to the haunting nature of these haunted places, listener discretion is advised. I'm your host, Mark. And I'm Courtney. And this is Mountain State Mysteries State Haunts. Today, we will be telling you ghost stories from the town of Beckley, West Virginia. Beckley is the seat of Raleigh County, was founded in 1838. It was named after John James Beckley, the Librarian of Congress and the first clerk in the U.S. House of Representatives and the father of Alfred Beckley. In the early days of Beckley, it was known as Beckleyville and Raleigh Courthouse. Beckley has some notable haunts in the town and the vicinity, including one that made the news. The Soldiers Memorial Theater at 200 South Canal Street is now a concert venue. The latest of its incarnations since it was constructed in 1931 through 1932. It was originally the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Theater, built in honor of World War I veterans. In its time, it served as the YMCA, a temporary courthouse, a county library, and a community center. The building was closed in the 1970s, but reopened in 1993. It was presently owned by the Raleigh County Commission's and operated by Theater West Virginia. Some of the haunting activity has been traced to an incident when the bleachers collapsed during the laying of the cornerstone ceremony on November 15, 1931. Fortunately, no one was killed, but some people were injured, including a tuba player named Bob, who suffered a severe neck injury and later was given living space in the basement of the theater where he died. People have reported seeing his ghost wearing gray clothing in the basement, hearing footsteps, whispers, and knocks. The ghost of a man dressed in clothing from the 1930s has been seen in the balcony and throughout the building. The sound of ghostly children can be heard throughout the building. Once, during a show, the sound of a saxophone was heard, but no saxophone was in the building. In 2011, an investigation was conducted by Eastern States Paranormal. The group captured numerous EVPs, including a female's voice that said, Balcony. Could she have been trying to direct the attention to the ghostly gentleman who haunts that area? The investigators also captured sounds of phantom tap dancing, knocking, and other unexplained noises. When they asked Bob to walk across the stage, you could hear his footsteps. You're listening to State Haunts by Mountain State Mysteries. When you're headed downtown to Main Street, you see a stunning Art Deco courthouse that was constructed in 1936 to 1937 around the original brick courthouse built in 1894. Luckily, quarried sandstone was used for the new building. Courthouses are notorious for being haunted as a result of the emotionally charged dramas that occur there. The Raleigh County Courthouse has a few haunts of its own. The most known is the Lady in Red, the ghost of a woman who wears a red dress and is usually seen in the jury room. Her identity is still unknown, but perhaps she served on a jury. She is also seen in the main courtroom. 
in September of 2000, a mysterious dark figure sat in the seat in the back row of the circuit courtroom for several days, and when the courtroom was dark, its features could not be distinguished. County Circuit Court Judge John Hutchinson told the Associated Press, We have a ghost. The ghost has been occupying the courtroom for a number of days, and we don't know why. You're listening to State Haunts by Mountain State Mysteries. Does a young couple killed on their wedding night haunt the road at Cherry Creek Dip? Or is it the haunting of only a legend? According to many people in the area, a couple was driving a white Pontiac Trans Am through the Cherry Creek Dip area when their car was struck head on and killed them both instantly. Some say the ghostly car appears on the road during the anniversary of the accident showing up just after midnight and disappears as it goes down the road. It's said that the accident took place in the summertime, but the exact dates is unknown. Some motorists driving through the area around midnight have seen a woman dressed in a wedding gown standing on the side of the road. When they stop and ask her if she needs help, she vanishes. You're listening to State Haunts by Mountain State Mysteries. Cranberry is an unincorporated area about three miles north of Beckley. According to local legend, The area where there once was train tracks is haunted by a man named Frank Easter, a stranger who came to the area looking for work in the 1940s and met his tragic end. No one knew much about Easter who kept to himself and lived like a hermit. He got a job working for the coal mines. One morning a fire was seen burning on the tracks and it was the burnt corpse of Frank Easter. No one knew how or why he wound up burnt to death on the track. Some speculated that he had walked to Beckley to drink at a tavern and had sat down to rest on the tracks on the way home. Or perhaps he was drunk and just couldn't make it home. He smoked a pipe so he maybe pulled it out for a smoke, fell asleep and caught his clothing on fire. Easter was buried in an old cemetery on top of a slate dump which is now behind some apartment buildings. Legend said after his fiery death, Easter walked the tracks and every morning around 4.30 a.m. a fire started up at the spot where he died. The outline of his body was said to be visible on the tracks which were hot to the touch. If people walked along the tracks, Easter pushed them away from his death site. His ghost looked like a pale man wearing miner's clothing with a long crook neck pipe hanging from his mouth. The tracks no longer exist and have been replaced by the rails to trail system of hiking and biking paths in the state. However, it's said that the burn outline of Easter's body is still visible and the gravel is still warm to the touch and during the winter snow melts on his grave. Thank you so much for listening to the first episode of Mountain State Mysteries State Haunts. Stay tuned for our next episode as we tell you the haunts of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram Facebook, TikTok, and wherever you listen to podcasts.